Hi, this is Dr. Toby, your host on Health and Wellness, inviting you to watch our show this week. We have on our show Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Charles and Joyce Clark, pastors of We Care Church. Pastor Charles Clark has his bachelor's in psychology, and his wife went to Jones Business School in Macomb, and she also trained as a as a medical coder and worked as a medical examiner for some years in the city of Jackson, Mississippi. They've been happily married for 33 years and they've been pastoring the church for going up to 21 years. And they're going to be a phenomenal resource. They've been able to change the demographics of their location by empowering the local population to own houses. They have an after, after school program where they mentor children. And they also have a daycare where they train young kids on how to know the Lord. This couple are phenomenal. They're preachers, they're teachers, but most importantly, they're an example of the African-American man or woman who can change their world. You don't want to miss them. Join us. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Hi, this is Dr. Toby, your host on Health and Wellness. Don't touch that dial. I have some great friends here with me who are going to rock your world today. Pastor Charlie and Joyce Clark, all the way from Jackson, Mississippi. They're here to share the good news of the gospel, the good news of their lives, the good news of how they, their lives have been a transformation for people in the area, and how they brought healing to their community through love through care, through sharing. In fact, the name of their church is We Care. Amen. That's right. The name of their church is We Care. And they've been around, I believe, since 2000. That's right. And um, I invited them here because I believe that every Christian is a healer. Yes. We are called to heal our community, heal the nation, heal the environment we live in. And, uh, and uh, you know, from my program Health and Wellness, we try to tell you how you can stay in health. Third John verse 2 is our theme scripture. I wish above all things that you be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers. But one of the things we don't talk a lot about is how people who care for others can become healers through their art. And Pastor Clark and Sister Clark have been doing that for the last 20 years. And I wanted them to share their story of healing. You're welcome on my show. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, yeah, real honor, real privilege. Oh. So let's just cut to the chase and get to the point. So what what, what brought the name We Care? Well, why did you name your church We Care? Well, the reason why the name is We Care is because uh, it stands for itself. We care. All of us must care for each other. Amen. Um, the Bible says that uh, we are many members but one body, and we are the body of Christ. Now, there are diversities, according to 1 Corinthians 12. There are diversities of gift, but it operates by the same spirit. Mm -hmm. And so what we did uh, in 2000, we came together and uh, we saw a dentist's office in the South Jackson area. And at that time, I was ministering at a place called the Billy Broomfield House off Gallatin Street in the Jackson, Mississippi area. I'd been there for about seven years uh, at the time I was employed. And so on every Thursday, I would go there and just minister the word of God to the homeless shelter. And what happened was I shared a vision. I shared a vision with a group of guys. And keep in mind that not expecting any return, but just sharing a vision. And these guys, some of them was carpenters. Some of them were electricians. Some of them were plumbers. But... Some way down life, uh, life gave them a different turn, and they became homeless. Mm. And so once I shared the vision about a ministry called, I want to start a ministry where we can be inclusive, and the name was We Care. And so, man, I mean, they just started to pass, I'm a plumber, pastor, I'm a carpenter. And so what happened was those guys fast forward the vision. Wow. And so... At that time, I had a circle of job. I was working at United Partial Service, and uh, man, I would go by different places, lumber companies, and 
and pick them up early in the morning because they had to leave the facility mm. early that morning. And I would pick them up with my 16-foot trailer full of lumber. And, man, they went to work. They went to work. And when I said they went to work, God, wow. just like God gave me the vision, God gave them the, the, the ability wow. to, to do the work. And so we went to work, and, and in 2001, uh, the vision came to pass. The church was completed. Uh, these guys, I mean, a lot of people would say, you know, they're not trustworthy. They're going to take some stuff or whatever. They didn't take anything. And then not only that, but the money, I was able to bless them with some money. Wow. Okay? I was able to bless them. But they didn't charge anything. They were so, and one of the guys was, he, he was so attached to the vision. He just came in and man, and he just, and, and, and Pastor Toby, I think you've been to the facility. I've been to the facility. He just, I mean, this guy, he hadn't been to school for none of this stuff. But he, he created a round stage. Wow. He said, this is going to be a place of prayer, an altar. God. And so that was the beginning of what we call We Care Church. And not only that, but. Uh, lots of places in the community where we would go and Sister Joyce would share more about this. And uh, that's another reason how we started the after school and daycare center. You know, uh, we would go and pick up a lot of kids from uh, underprivileged areas like Yarbrough, Westwick Apartment, and different places like that. And uh, what we would do is uh, we would just uh, show them a better life. Let me just say that. So you also started a daycare and after school program after the church. I don't know how soon after the yeah. church you started that. Well, we started in 2000 and I was trying to get everybody else to go to school, get the director's license and and I started getting magazines through the mail of furniture for the daycare center and and I said, God, what is it? So every time I got ready to send someone else, uh, they, they, it wouldn't pan out. Mm -hmm. And so one day I told a couple more ladies that Rick, I'm going to send you down to um, Macomb, and uh, you all got to take the director's class, and we're going to let you run it. And so when they got ready to call, they said, guess what, first lady? I said, what? You're going with us. I said, excuse me? <laughs> I said, well, if I'm going with you, I'm not driving, but I'll, I'll furnish your lunch, your breakfast, and everything, but you all you got to drive. And so that's what happened, and that's how I got into the daycare business, and then I began to see kids come in there didn't know ABCs, crying, and they was in the public school system. How many years after the church started? It's, it was you? about, it was about 2009. That's wow. Right. 2009, okay. nine years later. So you saw a need in I the community. I saw a need. Well, we had a, G, we had a free GED program on Highway 80. Okay. And we would come in and tutor kids, but that was all free. And that was back in 19... 98 before we got to church. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you a tutor? I mean, how did you handle the teaching part, obviously? <laughs> well, what, what I would do, I would get the older kids that was um, a, a students, and they would help me with other students. And whatever I needed from computer-wise, they planned their own programs. I didn't have to do anything. I was wow. just there. And then I would assist them with some of the tutoring and the teaching as I, as I do now. But, yeah, they came in, and they learned from each other. Wow. And I was learning from them. So we was all in a learning mode. So it started a wow. long time ago. Then we brought it over to the church. It was still free, GED. And the kids would walk down the street, and their mother would wonder where they were, and they would be over there. And the lady across the street had a daycare center, and she called me, and she said, Ms. Clark, there's a whole bunch of kids that are waiting on your step. Should I call the police? I said, no. I'll be there in a second. No, don't call them. I'll be there. They're waiting on me because I had a circle of job at that time. So they was waiting on me to get there. Wow. But wow. it's been rewarding. And so I had to open up another center, which is called We Care Learning Center. Oh. After I saw the kids, didn't know anything. Wow. So I said, okay, the next center we open up, we're going to be teaching. We're not going to have them here eight, nine, or ten hours just babysitting. So we equip you for Head Start. Jackson Public Schools, and we want to make sure that you're the smartest person because they learn from birth. Right. And so right. when they begin to learn from birth, and we instill in them, and we turn out some scholars. Praise the Lord. That is awesome. Because if a person has self-worth mm -hmm. and self-value, and they think they're smart, they can excel. So people in the new northeast Louisiana area don't know where South Jackson is, and you are talking here about you know, K 
kids who are living in, let me use the word, dangerous neighborhoods. Yes. And yes. you meant the statement, Pastor Clark, that you had to go pick up kids. Yeah. So in 2000, how was South Jackson? I moved there in 2017, so I can't give a judicious description. So in 2000, give us a bird's eye view of what you met when you moved to South Jackson. In 2000, when we first came to two, uh, and, uh, we, we care church, uh, the pioneer of the ministry, it was a plighted area, but it wasn't as bad as it is now, okay? A loss of homes that was vacant. Uh, and I keep in mind, the facility that we purchased, it was an abandoned dentist office. Mm -hmm. So at that time, the demographics was changing, okay? okay. We, it's like any other major city, like here in West Monroe, we have what we call the flight, the, you know, the most uh, high-level people. They would leave the community because now it's a place where we call renters and, they're, and you know, the homeowners just left. For the suburbs. Exactly, for the suburbs. And now all of a sudden, and now the school system is what we call the, the church in the school system. They are, they're, the parents are nomadic people. They move from one school to another. Why? Because they are renters, okay? Right. And so that was kind of like the atmosphere that we was in, okay? And so what we did, we came in, and our first mandate was to build relationship with the community. Once you build a relationship with the people in the community, you'll find out I find, they will look after you. They would look, in fact, uh, crime, you know, even though the crime rate was kind of high in the area, but overall, the people in the community would not bother we care church stuff, okay? <laughs> Why? Because they knew Pastor Clark and Sister Joyce was looking after them. In fact, even the little kids that was, uh, we call them little trouble youth at high risk youth, they would make sure, no, 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 don't bother Pastor Clark stuff, okay? Don't, don't do that. Don't walk across their grass, okay? Because they knew that they could come there and get some clothes. They knew they could get pencils and paper. They knew that they get their mother bills or sometimes had to pay electric bills. This is so ironic, uh, Pastor Toby. One of, when we first moved there, one of the ladies, I think she had a $50. Well, anyway, she wanted $50, okay? $50, okay? Ch she had five children, five or six, okay, children in the area, right down the street, and they would just pass right by the school. Look, we had a little elementary school called Lester Elementary School there in the South Jackson area. And so this lady with all those kids, single parent, and so they would just come and knock on the door. We would give them some water, whatever, said, come back to church, okay? And all of a sudden, after the invitation, she sent a letter and said, I need to pay this lecture bill, and I'm $50 short. And so we just, we, we helped her, we blessed her, okay? not knowing, not knowing that this was going to be one of the most faithful members in the church. Of the church. Wow. Okay. So she, she got a, a long story short. She said, can I come clean the church up? Wow. So she started cleaning the church. Okay. Uh, and then after building a relationship, once again, uh, this was the first thousand dollar donation wow. that we had because the lady was handicapped. Okay. And not, th not thinking in terms that she was going to be a blessing to the of church. Course. Okay, yeah. but man, she came in and she started counting those hundred dollars out, a thousand dollars. We just couldn't believe it. Said, so, "Look, we want to bless you with all those kids. Here you are. You coming to be a blessing to us." And so, listen. And so, once again, it's just been a it's just been a fabulous experience. Uh, I'm interested in knowing the story about picking up kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds like some kids leave school and they don't have a place to go. That's, That's what right. it sounds like, but That's correct right. me if I'm wrong. That's right. I, uh, Dr. Toby, I was pick up kids, and I think I had a little hatchback. <laughs> and there was an apartment when we first got started right behind the building I had leased for the GED and, and tutoring mm -hmm. kids. So I would go and pick up a load, and I'd drop them off. Like five and, kids. Yeah, how many could fit in my car at that time? Wow. <laughs> and I'd drop them off. Pack them in. And i say, now, be good. I left the oldest one in charge. <laughs> and I go back behind the apartment because it was like three minutes away. And I bring another load and I pack them in. And that was our transportation at that particular time. Wow. Then, you know, once we got to church in 2009, we got a van. Uh -huh. And then we began to pick up from Jackson Public Schools, different right. schools. Right. We would go to different schools and pick up those kids and we would bring them in, uh, give them snack. And, well, I used to not give them snack because I didn't know what they was going to eat later on. Right. So I would give them a full course meal. We would do homework. And those that 
you know, was just, just couldn't grasp what was going on with their homework, we'll spend a little extra time. And, but we award them because we used to have video games. So if you make good grades and we were gonna have a party, you can play games. Wow. And if you're good in school, you can come back and play games. But if you was bad, you're gonna have to have, be in time out and do homework till your mama come. So yeah, that was, that's what we did from a car to van. So like 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. or? No, uh, the first school get us out, gets out about 1.45. Wow. And I think that high school was like, 245 or something mm -hmm. they was the last one we picked up they was the last ones and we would bring them in and they would do homework until their parents came oh their parents would pick them up from their the parents church. would pick them up oh, now during the right. summertime they would drop them off and we would have summer camp wow and what we would do during the summer um for those kids that really did, wasn't exposed to a lot of things well we would take them skating to the movies and wow. if they didn't have any money we just say okay who parents gave them money okay give it to me Nobody knows who didn't have any money because we didn't want those kids to know Johnny don't have right, any money right, today. Right, right. So we just took the money and said, okay. And one of the girls told me one day, she said, you owe me $2. I said, oh, I do? <laughs> I said, just pay to get in the movie. I said, okay, I'll give you your $2 back and you pay to get in the movies. Wow. Yeah. So. I, the, 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 obviously, the parents knew where they were when you picked them up. And I was just curious about... Um, it's amazing that, you know, some kids leave school. The school bus drops them at home, That's right. but there's nobody at home. That's right. Nobody's at home. That's right. That's right. And the mom obviously thanks you because she's grateful that they have somewhere to go in exactly. between yes. so she exactly. gets back home. Yes. Exactly. You would be surprised of how many latchkey kids are in the home. You call them latch? Latchkey. Latch key. Key. Oh, well, that's just a they're by I, themselves. I don't know what it means. <laughs> In other words, those are people that are there by themselves without any adult su supervision. Right. Oh, right. And right. you know it's not safe at this particular time. Right. I don't want to be at home by myself sometime. You can imagine when a nine-year-old or a ten-year-old at home without their parents and somebody knock on the door. What are they going to do? And the school bus driver doesn't know. No, they don't right. know. They're just doing their job. Right. That's right. They just drop. Right. It's amazing. Wow. That's right. It's amazing that we have that number in our community. The people don't even know that. And the reason is because the parents need to work two, three jobs. Oh, yes. They can be, a, you know, it's exactly. a tough, if you're a single parent. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. You know. It's very tough. So, it's, so did the parents compensate you for all this I'm, at the beginning? I know you said it was free. Well, from the two. After school care. Uh, we did that free for a long time. Yeah. The after school program. Yeah, we, we did after school and t tutoring was on 80. And we did that before we got the church. And then we came over to the church. They would come in there, tutoring. Then we had the adults. The parents could come in, get GED. Oh, wow. So we did that for a long time. So the lady across the street said, you know, I got a daycare center, but really you need to have one. You better than kids than I am. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we would take kids places, and they would always make fun of our name. Mm -hmm. They would say, what kind of name is that? We Care Church. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then, and I have all these kids with me, and they, they thought I had a great big church. Like the, the skating ring in Pearl, that's the one you're No, we used to have one right across the street from the church. Oh, they closed I, it. I, closed took, it. I, right. yeah, oh. I took them there, because I was trying to patronize her in the, and, in the community, and we would go across there. But when we would have function, and they bite different kids from the community, I would have all these kids, and they'll look at me, oh, that's that little church down the street called We Care. <laughs> <laughs> they let her know she got all these children, <laughs> but they probably got five members in there. You know. What I'm <laughs> so yeah, I got five, mem five, five members maybe, but I got a bunch of God's like, children. Like Twenty children. <laughs> yeah. Thirty. Thirty. Yeah, I have so many kids, yeah. and so I knew that was my calling. Praise so the I Lord. So I said, Lord, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what you called me to do. I'm trying to push everybody else up in here. So now I'm, I keep telling Lord, okay, Lord, when is my season over? Right. And Lord said, and keep keep, keep saying, oh, no, you're going to have a school. And I'm saying, Lord, I'm trying to get out and retire. But I can't because maybe my work is not done. And Pastor, the totally rewarding thing of it is some of those kids now are grown. Wow. Some of those are young adults. Some of them are pastors. Some of them are teachers. Some of them are doctors and lawyers. They were molded you know, in that. Exactly. Yes. And it, that's yes. the rewarding of it. That's yes. And that's the pay yes. of it, okay? Wow. Yes. The Bible says he's a rewarder for those that diligently yes. seek him. Wow. And so it's a blessing when we see them now being very productive. That's a blessing. And where yeah. they came from. We know right. where they came where from. Where they okay. came from. Wow. Yeah. So 
tell me a bit about the daycare. Now, that one you get paid for. Well, yeah, I, I actually get paid for both of them now. Okay. But what I do, if, if somebody can't afford to pay, you know, because they got the voucher system. Right. Where they get a, some of the parents get assistance to bring their kids. But if they can't afford to pay, I'll, I look at them and say, well, what can you afford to pay? And I'm thinking, they probably thinking, what kind of daycare center is this? What can you afford to pay? <laughs> well, you know, because I'm trying to help them in the meantime. So it's not all about the money. It's about bringing this generation up to the next generation. And I don't want a lost generation. And I, see, I, I have seen so much just from having the after school and having the daycare. These kids go through more than you can even ever imagine. Wow. And, and when I look at them, and sometimes when I, I raise my voice, I say, they hear that all day at home. So let me, God, help me be a little more patient with them. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. they have stories. They have yeah. stories. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They have, yeah. Yeah. they have stories. It used to be a money-making venture. Yeah. I heard. Wait, daycares wait. used to be a, but now not as much. But I heard in the right. early 2000s, yeah. you right. can people make, went yes. in there for money. You didn't right. go in there for no. money. Right. Mm -mm. I did it free for years. Wow. Yes. And then I started to charge. Because uh, for, for a minute there, I, I didn't know the system for the vouchers. So I wasn't getting, all, I wasn't getting compensated. So I would have these kids all summer long, all, all day long, and I was still getting a little I, bit. You had to feed them, too. Yeah, you have to feed them. Yeah. <laughs> and then I said, oh, and somebody said, Joyce, you're supposed to get paid for them all day long. I said, oh, I didn't know that. And so when I learned better, I did better. But. We don't want, no child is left behind and no child is never turned around. And I know the state comes in and inspects oh, facilities yes, yes, and yes. you have to have certain yes. temperatures oh, in your fridges. Yes. Bathrooms have to be uh -huh. like yes. three, four oh, bathrooms. Yes, a number of hand kids. washing sinks. And now that COVID-19 is prevalent, you, you taking temperatures. Oh, you, wow. you, you know, you got to separate them, you know, because we got virtual learning. So I got some virtual learners. Oh, wow. And that, that's really, really challenging. So if somebody doesn't have Medicaid, do they still get vouchers, or is it only for the Medicaid? They, I don't know the system too they, well. They, so. can, they can apply for the vouchers, and it depends on your income. Okay. But after they check your income status, then they go, if your boyfriend, they're going to go, you have to file papers. Mm. They're saying that you're going to get this child support, and, mm. and if you don't do that, you're not going to get this voucher. Oh. So you have to go and make sure that you... Give your boyfriend's name or your husband's name. You got to put this information on the okay. paper for them, and then they will prove you those that voucher. But they're gonna go after him for that child support. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow. So yeah, they they gonna get vouchers, but they have a waiting list. Mm. What do you think is the reason for the high rate of single parenthood in America? Because <laughs> in Nigeria, where I come from, ninety percent of people are raised in a two-parent home, and mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. anybody watching can check the statistics. Ninety percent. And maybe it's because Africans tend to just endure whatever. They stick to the marriage no matter what. So I was shocked when I came to America and I saw divorce as a norm. 20%, mm -hmm. 30 in, in Wisconsin, the statistics said 20% of African-American children are raised in a single parent. Mm -hmm. So 20% are raised in a two-parent home. 80% mm -hmm. are raised in a single parent right. home. Right, exactly. So, I mean, what do you think is responsible for that? The 80 percentile, wow. Uh, I will even go back to this also. It's not a very much difference between the church also, okay? Right. And there's a lots of people that's uh, married, and they can't stay married, okay? They don't take their vi vows serious. Uh, one of the major reasons, one of the major reasons why I believe that especially in the Afro-American homes, the reason why we have such a high percentage of single-parent homes is because most of the men, I'm talking about, black African-American men, it is more productive. It is more advantage for them to, in other words, the system endorsed the man leaving the home, the system, okay? Because George talks about vouchers. She talked about welfare. She talk, See, this thing called welfare and voucher system and all, it is a temporary, it shouldn't be a lifestyle, okay? It has pulled down the African-American exactly. economy. Exactly, power, right? exactly. And so it endorses the man being absent. Absent. Okay? Right. And so the woman, the female, and the children, they could get more if the man is absent from the home. 
And so what happens is a lot of times, you know, the, the stimulus check comes the stimulus in. Check, exactly. Ten thousand because exactly. the is not you know, and, 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 and Pastor told me this is this is this is such a this is so ironic to me is that we have a system that endorsed this, but it goes all the way back to the church. It wow. comes back to the church, okay? The church should stand up and speak out against this, okay? It is the church that should make the difference in the community, right. in the community, okay? Not the government, Not okay? The government. It is the church that says we should stay together. But how can the church be that voice or that pillar when it's just as, it's just as bad in the church, church, okay? When men and women of the cloth, men and women that say they love Jesus, they can't stay together, can't stay okay? Together. In a marriage, you're gonna have some difference, okay? Right. Okay, it's never gonna be what I call roses. Okay? <laughs> you gonna, but you have to work through those issues, okay? Right. And you have to be willing to say, "I took these vows, and I'm gonna stick." So with when your parents were growing up, divorce wasn't this common because they didn't have this social blanket, or let me use the word social yeah, yeah. soft landing that people have today. Because if you get divorced, you get a check, and you get. <laughs> you can't stimulate us. Like you can. Yeah, it wasn't such. It wasn't such a. Okay, my father is 95 years of age today. Oh wow. He's still living. My mother is 91 years of age. Okay. Wow. She's still living. And what we do as the siblings, we rotate. I have two, or two to two or three days, sometime a week, and I go take care of my parents. Okay. And uh, my mom, she have a, a suggest a congested heart failure. And, uh, but she's still active. She still does stuff. And the, the question was, you know, I said, Mom, uh, I said, are you going to be okay? She said, the only reason why I'm still here is to help take care of, she called her husband, Mr. Clark. Okay. Okay. The we're going to have to run because the <laughs> clock is winding down. But we're going to come back. Pastor Clark, and Ch uh, Larry, and Charlie, and Joyce are going to tell us how they met, talking about marriage, because... I feel that the marriage institution is the bedrock of the family and the nation. And until we get that straight, we will not get America straight. That's right. Amen. We need to, even though we won't get the church straight if we don't get the marriage That's straight. Right. So I'm going to talk to them about their marriage and they're going to open up and share their ups and downs and how they went through it. And I'm sure you'll be blessed. Join us next week. This is Toby Mama saying Jesus is Lord.